Dominic Dorfmeister is a key contributor on the React Query team. We met up at the React Summit where we talked about React Query, where it's going, and also how React Query fits into Next.js and React Server components. It's fascinating stuff. Let's get right into it. Dominic, we know you from the React Query team, and okay, yeah. React Query is going now into version 5. It is, yeah. Awesome. So what new features can we expect in React Query 5? Yeah, I actually call it like the fifth uh, API fail, because a major version <laughs> always indicates that you haven't got it right the first time. So oh, this fair, is like, it's like fair the enough. Fair time enough. You got it Maybe right. it's constantly improving. Yeah, it's constantly. So we are, what we are doing is uh, we are getting rid of some of the overloads that we have. So you will sure. only be able to call use query with uh, one object as a parameter, oh. which this will actually improve developer experience because you have one single syntax that you can use everywhere, be it for prefetching or for fetching. Um, and it will also improve the error messages you get from TypeScript probably. So if I want to be ready for this, can I use that today in React Query 4? Absolutely. That syntax has always been available to okay. just pass one object in. And we actually have an ESLint rule, our own ESLint plugin query that has a rule that actually enforces you to use this and it's auto-fixable. So if you want, I'd appreciate it if you'd um, like use the ESLint plugin. Yeah, yeah. It has I mean, I did not know, so that is awesome. Yeah, I yeah. Need, we need to like get the word out more because yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of the first things after the DevTools that I would encourage people to install. Yeah, the DevTools are sweet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because the second thing that it actually has is a way to make sure that every Thing that you use inside the query function is also a part of the key. So it's kind of similar to the um, like exhaustive dependency right. dependencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it uh, kind of reminds you that you should use it, um, add that to the key right. and um, to kind of like um, make sure you don't run into some issues. Right, uh, where you well. have, you're getting a different query going to the same cache item yeah, and then exactly. getting back the wrong data. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, now that I think about it, it is exactly like a dependency array. Which yeah. Is, yeah, right, crazy. But without the drawbacks. I always say. Like, <laughs> <laughs> without the, yeah. Mm. Uh, you, don't, you don't need to think about referential stability or anything. Uh, right. Oh, that, that's the good yeah, part. I guess. Yeah. Red query hash is the key, deterministically. Oh. So you can put objects and arrays in there like uh, as you want. Oh, I see. So it's a, it's, it's a deep copy, and it actually hashes it or something like it, that. It hashes it to a string. Yeah, there's a hash oh. function. You can also provide your own hash function if you were to use like uh, things that are non JSON serializable inside of it, like mm -hmm. uh, maps or something like that. Wow. You could provide your own um, and then just use super JSON or something. Yeah. To serialize and those. it's interesting that like, the semantics are different. Yeah. And one wonders why that wasn't a great approach for the regular dependency arrays, because that seems like a good thing to do. Yeah. We get rid of a lot of problems. <laughs> oh, wow. OK. Maybe we're missing something. I don't know. <laughs> it could also be the case. I mean, um, hashing has yeah. been around for a long time, so yeah. I don't think it's going to yeah, fail us anytime but we, soon. But we, we do have some, some new features in, in, in version 5. OK. Um, let me just quickly think about uh, what, what, uh, what will be the most important thing that we're going to ship. Uh, so we have a, we have a new um, approach to optimistic updates, actually. Okay. That's in version 5, because optimistic updates are, if you've worked with React Query before, there is a great way to write to the cache, but it's kind of a bit boilerplate with things that you do. And inspired by what some other frameworks are doing, you now also have the option to, when you call a mutation, you get back the variables that mm -hmm. were used to make the mutation. Ah. And you can just render them inside your UI, right. similar to what probably Remix is doing, right, in, right. In, in a certain way. So you just get the variables back, you render them in your list that you have, and that works very well for some simple use cases where the query is only used in one component. Right. And if you have more advanced cases where you actually want to write it to the cache, you can still do that with the old way. Yeah. That's and so for people that don't know, so an optimistic version of this is where you are updating the UI, even though you have not gotten the yeah. transaction back yet that confirms that, that actually happened, to give it uh, that feel of like, oh, okay, that's out there already. An example would be like a chat message, right? You yeah. hit the chat message, you add it to the, to the list, and then eventually it actually, hopefully, goes through. Exactly. There yeah. are cases where they're very useful, especially when the, the uh, instant user feedback is something that you want. For example, a toggle button, you, 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 yeah, you, you don't right. want to click that and then wait for half a second until it like moves over because right. you, know, you might be thinking you misclicked. So you, you'd really want it to be responsive immediately. Yeah, and, exactly. that's, and that's where uh, those come in very handy. Nice. Yeah. 
and then okay so well yeah all right more more features well yeah we've, we've, been, we've been working a bit on um, on infinite queries oh so cool. um, they will um, have a, a bit of a different syntax um, how you pass in default parameters um, we have some typescript improvements on them that make um, select actually work well instead of uh, on, on, on type level uh, <laughs> there have been some issues uh, in the current version um, thanks to a contribution, um, I tried actually tried to fix this like three times and never and never made it. Like it's, it was pretty hard, and then we got an external contribution, so really great. Oh, for that. okay. Yeah. And it's going to be awesome. There's going to be a new feature on Infinite Queries as well, where you can limit the amount of pages that are in the cache mm, to kind right. of like kind of like a, a sliding window where you say I only want to have like at most five pages in the cache. And then you kind of like have one page and then the others come in and as more pages come in, the other ones basically kind of rotate out and the user can still go back and you have to kind of like refetch them as they go. Yeah. And that's kind of an optimization so that when you refetch, uh, invalidate the whole uh, infinite query, you are actually only refetching that that is in the cache that you're currently interested in and not like maybe everything that has ever been fetched. Right. So there's like uh, a bit of improvements on that side as well. Awesome. So. Certainly, React Query is excellent in cases like you know, using spas like Vite and uh, create React app and uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's I guess the summation of the list there. But um, I, I would say good also on Next.js, even 13 with the pages directory. But of course, now we've gotten to the app router. And do you have any advice for people? I know you wrote an article just recently on not using React Query? Yeah, wasn't that the point? Well, that was as, as one of the points. So um, yeah. I think that if you are using a um, mature framework that has very good built-in solutions for data fetching and also mutations, and I think uh, Remix qualifies for that just as much as, as Next.js with the app directory uh, right. does, will do once the mutations become uh, uh, in like uh, out of alpha version, um, then it would be kind of like weird if you wouldn't use that to do data sure. fetching for yeah. like your standard ways to do things. Makes total sense. And then you can still uh, add React Query once you hit a point where um, that isn't enough for what you're trying to do. So if you're displaying something and then you're updating it, and you're going to a server action and mutations and everything just works the way you want it, then there might not be, React Query might not be for you. Yeah. because there, why bring it out if you don't need it? Exactly. Exactly. But then it's going to be like maybe you're building some um, things where you need a bit of a more like um, more accurate data even though you don't have an invalidation that's triggered by the user so a standard, standard example is like a polling scenario mm -hmm. or you really want that situation where if a user like um, switches away and comes back after two minutes maybe you actually want an automatic refetch just because the user right. looks at the page refetch on mount refetch on, on focus exactly one of those those like um, um, automatic and, and magic updates that that react query just yeah just, just rules brings that to the yeah. brings to the table then you can still do that with the app directory by um, basically making a fetch in the in the server component and then passing it um, with our hydration component um, to the client, so you're dehydrating it on the server, similar to how you would do it in get server side props before that, and then you're passing it to a client component um, where it's then being picked up and it's get, get, getting getting put into the cache uh, on the server side. And Any then, changes from that in five as opposed to four? Uh, not much as of now. We have we've renamed one component okay. from, from like hydrate to hydration boundary, and uh, we are we're st and the only thing that we're still in, in in discussion at the moment is trying to figure out how the whole suspense on the server thing is going to turn out. Um, and there might be some new APIs, and we're trying to finalize those. But it's still very much in the experiment experimental phase. So uh, we're just <laughs> nice. trying, trying to figure things out there. Nice. I know it's a little early to talk what failure comes next, but what, what failure would go into like five, into six? <laughs> Version six, yeah. Um, I don't know, that's really, I hope like this time we, we don't have that many fails, so the APIs are hopefully like. <laughs> not intending any failures not, right not now. Not intending, yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. but again, uh, the more feedback we get on the alpha version that's already out, so you can already use it. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, it's, on, it's on NPM. Um, and the more feedback we get early, the more like we can incorporate. So the worst thing that can happen is that we get no feedback, we release it, and then, because now it's stable, and then on the day of the release, we yeah, have like, tons like, of complaints. Ah. Or oh, why isn't this, why is it this way? Or why didn't you think about this? But at that time, it's already a bit late. So if, you're, if you want React Query uh, version 5 to become really great, um, we need more people to uh, try out the alpha and beta versions. Awesome. So that's, 
Can we expect any content coming out on React Query anytime soon? Um, I'm um, yeah. I, I want to write another article about like the uh, um, server components. Yes, please. That was, uh, um, I've still I'll still back that up with a, a video. Whatever you do, <laughs> I will. We'll, we'll multimedia it. Yeah. So that's probably next on my list. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thanks again to Dominic for this great conversation. And thank you again to Git Nation, which hosts JS Nation and React Summit, both in Amsterdam. It was a fantastic conference. And if you want to go to one of these conferences, there's another one coming up in London, React Advanced, and then another in New York, another React Summit. Fantastic conferences. I couldn't recommend them more. In the meantime, of course, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comments section down below. If you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.